This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 608 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is brought to you by FeedXL.com, where horse folks go for accurate, unbiased nutrition information. Because nutrition counts. <music> Greetings, horse people. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is from Kim Walnus. Kim competed on her legendary partner, the Grey Goose, in Europe and the U.S. as a member of the United States equestrian team from 1980 to 1986. Her career highlights include winning team and individual bronze medals at the World Three-Day Event Championships in Lumellen, Germany, and winning the prestigious Rolex Kentucky Three-Day Event in 1982. These days, she travels throughout the United States as an instructor and coach. Today's tip is about good hands. Kim talks about making a good hand-rain body connection for better communication and better performance. But first, a word from today's sponsor, FeedXL.com. Uh, poor Gypsy is suffering from horse envy. He's the new kid in the pasture and can't get over the stamina and shape of his fellow stallmates. Rumors around the barn point to FeedXL. It seems their owner has been online and discovered the FeedXL nutrition tool. That means Gypsy's in for a big transformation. The other horses have been telling Gypsy all about the changes made to their diet and how Feed XL has improved their overall well-being. When it comes to your horse's diet, conflicting advice can result in overfeeding and money wasted. With a Feed XL nutrition tool, enter your horse's weight, diet, and activity level to get started. It'll allow you to see where your horse's diet stands and give you the opportunity to revise it until it's balanced. Feed XL has the latest science backing them up allowing you to take charge of your horse's diet with an easy-to-use nutrition tool, taking the guesswork out of what to feed your horse. It's almost like Gypsy has his own personal nutritionist right at the barn. Visit FeedXL.com for a simple and easy nutrition tool to balance your horse's diet for optimum health. Now, enjoy today's tip. And Kim Walness is back here with us again today with some great helpful hints and handy advice for hands it appears today good hands that term good hands specifically good hands okay good hands lay it on me gal well what does that mean good hands to me it means hands that are um holding the reins softly without tension and that and that the directions that are coming through those hands down the reins to the horse's mouth are really coming more from the body than they are from the hands or the arms. Hmm. And we tend to think that, yeah. So it's really about having your body at the end of the reins and riding in such a way that the horse goes out to the reins because he feels that they're a safe space to go to, Mm -hmm. not something to protect himself against, but something, a safe space to go to. Two, and that's what allows the horse to release the muscles all across his top line and engage his core and abs and then be able to move freely no matter what the discipline is. So when you say tension, let's, let mm-hmm. us differentiate between tension on the part of the rider, which creates um, a lack of trust or discomfort for the horse, versus... Tension, cre- tension creates pressure. Pressure. pressure on the rein, yes. Versus tension on the reins, meaning that the reins are taut versus loose and loopy. Right. Contact. Well, we, some people ride with a loose and loopy rein, but you, and you still want to have a soft hand. You don't want to have tension because that gets translated even down a loose rein. Aha. Uh-huh. So here we have a, a, a point. Um, mm-hmm. So if you ride English or you ride Western or you ride around on trail rides... If, mm-hmm. you're, if you do not have good hands, um, regardless of whether or not the reins are stretched tight, you're still going mm-hmm. to be doing your horse a disservice and at the very least limiting his performance. Yes. Okay, so let's go over um, for extra stiff wrists, bad hands, Jen. Um, 
dealing with good hands. <laughs> The, just well, for the, so the listeners I, have have something to relate this to. When Kim first met okay. me, my hands were so tense she made me ride my horse in a halter. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't even put a bridle on that poor you're thing. Not, you're not alone, Jen. <laughs> I'm always looking out for the horses. That's right. And, and when people come and take less, when people come and take lessons on my horse, they always ride him in a halter. Yeah, but it, but it doesn't make any difference. He still does everything in a halter that he does in a bridle. Precisely, it's but it's degree. it's a lot more forgiving yeah. when there's riders like me on board. <laughs> when we screw Indeed. up, it when, did, it, you when know. there's work to be done. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, so, so give me, you bring give me up some, a good point. some sort of pointers bring, on what good hands here. Okay, you bring up a good point. Um, Tension. Tension is really the source of it, isn't it? And so tension comes, um, you know, in Western society, we're often given the image of strength as uh, uh, what we think of, what we tend to think of when we image strength as like a bodybuilder, somebody who's buff and worked out and has muscles that are visible. Uh So to get the feeling for this, for our radio listeners, what they can do is like, you know, show their biceps. Bring your hands up and make fists and make your biceps pop up. Okay. That's like the bodybuilder type. And that is, that is tension and that is contraction. You know, if, you, if you're still doing this, which I hope you're still doing it, don't do it until I tell you to stop, it's exhausting. And if you notice, you, most people, nine out of, 99.9 out of 10 people, don't breathe. They don't breathe when they're in contraction, or their breathing is very oh, shallow. I and didn't notice that till you said it. You're, you're, I was turning blue, mm-hmm, and, and I couldn't wait until you told me to stop. <laughs> <laughs> like, please. Yeah, I think I better say, relax that for everybody. Let it, let it go. Okay. And then go back and do it again, because the other thing I want you to notice, is if you're sitting or even if you're standing, is that you'll be tight all the way down your body. You know, a lot of people clench their toes at the same time. Definitely you're tightening your bottom. Your your buttocks are going to be tight, and, and so is your back. Everything gets tight. When, con- when you're in the presence of contraction and tension, then it tends to resonate through the whole body. So in contraction, all the muscles are turned on in that area and other areas that we're not even aware of, and they're fighting against one another, and that's why it gets exhausting to hold your hands up like that and show your biceps with fists. It's just exhausting. So it's not an efficient way of being. In Eastern society, the, the visual, you know, the, the image most people get for strength is like uh, martial arts. And when you see a martial artist, they don't usually have any visible bulging muscles. Martial artists have muscles like cats have muscles. You never, you never pet a hard cat. They're very soft, and yet cats are incredibly strong when you think about it. They can, they can lift like something the same size they are. They can lift it and drag it. They can jump with it. They can leap tall buildings in a single bound. They're quite... <laughs> Super cat. Okay, got it. Super cat. <laughs> right. <laughs> they're incredibly strong, and yet they're soft, aren't they? Yes. Yes. So lies. For, they're lies. Lies, yes, yes, because they're only using the muscles they need to use at any given time. So to get a feel for that, what i like for you to do is um, just put one hand, let's put your, put, take one arm and put your elbow by your side. And just extend your fingers straight out from your arm. So that hand is flat, yes? Got it. Okay. The other hand, you're going to bring around. um, You're going to gently put the pads of your fingers against the palm of your hand and your thumb against your, the knuckle of your first finger. Kind of like I was holding my reins. That's right. Only you're going to curl your wrist in so that the bottom part of your knuckles are facing toward the the hand that's flat. Oh, okay. And then you're going to push. You're going to push with the, the, um, the hand that's curled. You're going to push against the flat hand, and your elbows are going to come out. Got it. Can you feel that? Got it, yep. Okay, now, if you notice when you're doing this, you, it, it's easy to keep breathing. 
And oh. it just so it just so happens that it activates your core the right way. Really? Wow. Yeah. Think about you know if you're doing it, then you should feel your stomach pushing out a bit. Well, I you know I didn't notice it until you said that. I said, oh, it is. It is, and your <laughs> your rear end is relaxed if you're sitting on a chair or the saddle when you're doing this. Your rear end stays relaxed, and it pushes you deeper into the saddle. And that's what in a soft way. That's what we're looking for. This is another one I'm going to take to the barn with me tomorrow. There you go. Interesting. So this, this I call tone. And tone is the opposite of contraction. It is expansion. And, and to understand what I mean by that, if we do this again, this time I want you to be aware of the muscles inside your arm, arms. And I want you to feel how they're kind of pushing out against your skin. Versus, if you go back to the uh, showing your biceps, the muscles kind of draw inside away from your skin. Oh, yeah, it, it kind of yeah. If it, it's it's easy to to have a uh, a mental image of my muscles contracting against my bones when I do yeah. the show off my bicep. Right. Interesting. Very good. And they push away from the bones when you are doing the tone. The one where you're you're pushing one hand against the other. Huh. Very so that, yeah. That huh. element of expansion and tone is how I would like to see the rider ride the horse through their whole body. Their whole body is is the the muscles are pushing out away from the bones and filling the skin and wrapping gently around the horse making contact, you know, uh, gently around the horse with the legs. And the core is gently, you know, you're being pressed down into the saddle simply by activating your core. It's putting you deeper in the saddle. And then you have this nice, soft, now you don't want to be pushing out against your skin with your arms. You want to just be letting them um, softly be. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. All right. Does that all make sense so far? Um, I think I'm getting it. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm percolating at a pretty mad rate right now, but I'm getting it. <laughs> okay. So then the next step, we go back to the biomechanics and alignment. You want your elbow to be hanging straight down from your shoulder blade. So that the bottom of your elbow bone, and you might have to find that, you know, where is that exactly? The bottom of my elbow bone is pointing straight down to your hip joint. Oh, I got that one. Yay, ding, 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 ding. Another cup of cocoa for me. (laughs) And so now if you bring your arm back a little bit, that's your elbow pointing backward. All right. And if if you bring your arm forward a little bit, that's your elbow pointing forward. We want it to point straight down to the hip joint. Now, okay. most riding pants have a crease down that they have a seam down the outside, and that seam lies right over your hip joint, just in case you're not quite sure where that is. It'll be pointing to that seam. Okay, and I've just, I've just now discovered that the seam on my uh, pajamas is in the same place. I'm good now. <laughs> I'm, I am not embarrassed to say that I do podcasts and I do recordings <laughs> in my pajamas. And I'm so glad you're so comfortable. Good for you. <laughs> All right, continue. I'm sorry. I digress. I distracted no, our great. expert, and I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. So now <clears throat> the inside bone of your elbow needs to rest gently against your clothing. You're not hugging yourself. It's just resting gently so that we don't have elbows that are sticking out, huh? Got They're it. They're just resting gently. And, and if you have those two points aligned correctly, then if you look down, your arms will be pretty well straight. You know, we have two bones in our lower arm, and they need to be stacked one on top of the other. So if you twist your wrist, you'll feel how those bones rotate. But we mm-hmm. want the bones to be stacked one on top of the other. And we manage that how? How to stack them one on top of the other? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, by having your elbows point straight down. Oh, okay. And, and not having your wrists rotated now 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 we get into something that's a little bit more um trying to come up with how to give a visual on this um you know that that um let me let me back up on this 
we're looking for a straight line down the outside of your arm to the first knuckles of your hand. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So it's the and outside the you. outside of the arm is if the the top of your hand all the way up your forearm is one plane. The top of your arm is what I would normally call the outside of my Okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay, I've got this now. It's a yeah. it's it's a continuous yeah. okay, plane outside. from from the top of your hand across your forearm. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that helped at all, but okay. that's where I'm going. And, and, and the, the, your thumb rests gently on the first knuckle of the, on the first knuckle of your, well, the bottom knuckle of your first finger, your index finger. So your index finger, the palm of, or the pad of your thumb is mm-hmm. on the knuckle of your, um, your index finger, and it shouldn't be wrapped down around your middle finger like you were making a fist. That's not where we want it. That is, well, we don't want to make a fist by having our thumb inside our fingers because that's how you break your thumb if you hit somebody. Well, or, or on the My outside because, you, you know, you wrap it around the outside. Or, oh, yeah, true. No, a lot of people. So, so here's the big deal about that. Why I want that thumb on top of that forefinger is because that's where you hold the reins, if you're English anyway. You hold the reins with your thumb and your forefinger so that the other fingers can softly wrap around without making a fist and strangling the reins. Okay, no strangling of the reins. I'm going to jot that down. No strangling of the reins. Okay, got it. And, the, and you close your right. hands, and they're, and they're quiet and soft. Right, and you don't got want it. to curl your fingers into the, your palm, and you don't want like, your fingernails touching your palm. You want the pads of your fingers touching the palm of your hand. Okay, I'm sitting here at my desk. With the pal- the pads okay. of my fingers touching my palm. Uh, okay, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, the back of your hand, you know, the, the, the continues down the outside of your arm here, the back of your hand, you've got muscles in there, and if you soften those muscles, that gives you the soft fingers that don't strangle the reins. Oh, that did make a difference. How about that? I never thought about having muscles in the back of my hand, but when you said that, I went, well, okay, no. if you say so. And I kind of did. I oh. know. Oh. It, it, makes my, my, it makes my fingers hurt less. I like that. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Especially if you're older and have arthritis in your fingers. It makes a really big difference. No, nobody nobody, in the, room, ha- nobody in, in the room here right now is old or has arthritis. Nobody here has. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you know that straight line from hip to elbow? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a big misconception about that. A lot of people think that that straight line from hip to elbow is across the top of your arm. And this is why we see all these low hands that are down below the pummel of the saddle or below the horse's withers. They're trying to keep a straight line across the top of their arm to the crook of their elbow. Huh. But the actual, the actual line is from the bottom of the elbow. So the hands need to be a little higher. And that's, if your hands are slightly higher, then the weight goes into your elbow. There's a little bit more to this, but the weight goes, heavy elbows make for light hands. Oh, that's a good one. I like that. That's easy mm. to remember. Mm-hmm. Okay. Heavy elbows, Heavy elbows make, for, elbows light make for light hands. Heavy elbows. Now, Got it. Now, a lot of people might say, a heavy elbow? How am I going to get a heavy elbow? Well, now I've got a trick. This is a really cool trick. And it's another, it's like a training wheel thing. It's not permanent, but you might have to do it for a while. If you imagine, and and the folks at home, because they can pause this and go get two mugs and fill them with water. Or you can imagine, if you're on your horse, that you've got mugs filled with hot coffee, very hot coffee or hot cocoa. You don't want to spill that on your horse or yourself. And so if you cock your wrist so that the weight is in the heels of your hands the way the weight is in the heels of your feet, then you're going to have that light hand and heavy elbow. That's a, that's a really interesting way to, because to, you can practice that when you're not on your horse. Again, it gives you the opportunity to 
practice it sitting at your desk or, you know, hanging around. Mm-hmm. And then you can take that feel back to the stable with you and, and work on it on your horse. That's a good idea. Well, the, and you can even take it a step further. So you've got these mugs of water, or that us, we're, we've got mugs of water because we don't want to stain anything and we don't want to hurt anybody. So we, excuse me, we have these mugs of water. Then if you walk around with those mugs of water and you get to the point where you don't spill it, you're in all the right muscles. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so you, you don't have to watch it. You don't have to you can just walk around and it's just there. Mhm. So if well, if you, you can't can, walk across the kitchen. To, yeah, if you can't walk across the kitchen without spilling water, then you know that you have to do you have to experiment till you find where does the water stay quiet. So you can just yeah. play around with this and then when you get it at the walk, then trot. And then when you trot, then and you get it as trot, then you canter. You know, on your own two mm-hmm. feet, it's always fun anyway, We're holding those mugs of water. And it really t- helps you understand how to stay soft in your muscles and let your joints absorb the motion and how to be in correct alignment and balance. It puts you there. That's a, that, that would be a fun one to take um, if you've got kids to teach. You can give them, because you can buy mm-hmm. plastic mugs so that if they drop plastic them, there's mugs. no... And yeah. and have them ride that way, have them practice dressage tests without their ponies that way, and without even mm-hmm. realizing it, they're going to be learning to be self-aware of their hand position and create a an independent hand from their body without having to grill them about keeping their hands still. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great idea. I like that. Yes. So now once again. Another, yeah. a, a, another, okay, another aid to keeping your hands still is to take... Um, a whip, like a dressage stick or jumping bat, whatever, doesn't matter, and you lay it across your wrist. And then you um, you can walk and uh, just allow your body to move your arms. You don't move your arms. You just allow your, your soft motion of your hips to move your arms, which would simulate following the horse at the walk. And you want to keep the stick level and still. And it gets, that's not too difficult to do with the walk, but the trick is when you start trotting. Because if your hands go up and down in the saddle, then when you are trotting with the stick, your hands will go left and right. So you want to be able to trot without any motion in your hands at all. And so, so that you don't get too frustrated trying that out if it doesn't go right straight away. What I would suggest is that you trot in place, like a horse piaffing. You're going to trot in place because it's easier then to keep your hands Mm -hmm. and and arms level and still and then slowly start creeping forward a little bit till you've mastered it because the trick is in the elbows. It's all about the elbows. Well, heavy shoulders. Your shoulders staying down and heavy. You know that in our society where we have so much stress along with clenched buttocks, we tend to have raised shoulders. In body symbology, the shoulders represent, if you think about how it's spelled, all the shoulds in our life, all the things that we (laughs) should be doing. And there's no No. wonder they creep up around our ears. None of us have that. (laughs) No, 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 no. (laughs) So that's great. You can use the mug one and you can use the the, the stick one. That's great. I like that. Oh, yes. And then you can canter with a stick and it's, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. Well, some of us can canter with a stick. I think I'm going to try the walk and trot first. I'm going to set myself up for success. (laughs) Exactly. Set yourself up for success and take small, you know, one step at a time and and make sure that you tell your body how excited you are that it's working with you on this. Yes. Pat yourself on the back more often than you scold yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there shouldn't be any scolding anyway because that's judgment. And when you're judging, then the body gets defensive. And then it says, hm, I don't know if I want to work with you. <laughs> <Don't> want- <laughs> and, and then if you keep that up for a long period of time, there might be medication required, and that's just no good. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so, so good hands, what it really means to have good hands and some excellent exercises and visuals to get your maybe not so good hands to be good hands. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. You are so welcome. And we're going to be seeing you again soon, Kim. Can't wait. After that tip, I've got a lot of homework. 
To listen to all of Kim's tips, just go to horsetipdaily.com and go to the experts drop down menu on the left. You can also go to Kim's website at thewayofthehorse.com. She also has a Facebook page, Kim Walness, W A L N E S. Don't forget our sponsors here on Horse Tip Daily because they make these podcasts possible. Today's sponsor has been FeedXL.com. That's where I go at least four times a year. Every time the seasons change, I go into my FeedXL.com account, put in Beaker what's in what Beaker is eating right now and what I anticipate he should be eating as the seasons change. For example, going from winter into spring and make sure that I've got it, got it balanced and I'm not giving him too much of anything or not enough of, enough of something else. FeedXL.com. Please stop by the Horse Tip Daily Facebook page and let us know what you think of the tips you hear on the show. It's also a great place to tell us about topics you'd like to hear us cover on the show. You can subscribe to all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network through iTunes or Zune and get your horse podcasts automatically downloaded to your iPod, Zune, or MP3 player. You can also listen to the shows right on Facebook. The player's right there every day. I'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip. Until then, go ride your horse. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily. (laughs) Thank you.